But love your enemies and do good. And lend. Expect nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be the sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and, and the evil. To be merciful even as your father is merciful. Judge not and you will not be and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will it be put in your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Welcome to every heathen and pagan's favorite Sunday. The great commandment for the unbeliever. The club to use against the Christian. The verse of all verses, the words of all words. The only argument that can shut down every argument in fact, to the heathen and the pagan, the only words in the entire Bible. Judge not. Which is a way of saying, see, you don't even know your own God. Judge not. Also another way of saying, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I win. That's it. Judge not. See, when the heathen and the pagan use this term, they forget that there's an entire Bible that wraps around those words. Judge not, and you will not be judged. But when that text is used against the Christian, the assumption is, is that judging is bad. But judging is not bad. I refuse to believe it because simply those who take this text and twist it and say, Judge not, I'm out. I win. For those who use that text forget that the one who judges is Christ. Christ judges. And if Christ judges, how can judging be a sin? Because what if the pagan or the heathen says, Judge not, and then Christ says, I'm going to judge you, then what's he going to say? No, 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 no. You said judge not. You can't judge me. Christ will come to judge both the living and the dead. You see, the judge not text, it was not meant to be a club to beat each other over the head with. And that is why, and we, have, we, we as Christians have even become, began to hear those words as if it's some kind of club or defense mechanism to say, well, see, even your own Bible tells you not to judge. And then they just hope that you just haven't read your Bible enough to go, well, I guess you're right. But the truth is, judge not in here is not necessarily simply a command to not judge. It's a command to be merciful. That's the difference. It's not a command to say, hey, you have an opinion, therefore you're judging me. You can't do that because Jesus said not to. You make judgments every single day of your life. You judge to drive on the right instead of the left side of the road. You judge whether to come or not to come to church. You discern right from wrong and make judgments based on that. Judging is not bad. Just know that, that when you judge, you will be judged by the same measure. So if you desire to judge with the same judgment, then may you judge mercifully. And that's where we find Christ in this text. We've, there's another buzzword text here in our, or buzzword 
uh, saying here in our text, if someone slaps you, it doesn't say it in this, te- in this uh, translation, but you all know it as, turn the other cheek. Okay. That is not to say that turning the other cheek is weakness or that it is that you should be taken advantage of and allow yourself to be taken advantage of or anything like that. But here's the, here's the reality. Sinners are going to sin. And when sinners sin, sinners get caught in the crossfire. It's an, it's an evil cycle. When we sin against other sinners, sinners are sinned against. And so who stands righteous at the end of the day? Who's at the top of the hill? Whose cheek does not have red marks on them? Is not the one who struck the cheek in the first place a sinner? But you turn your uh, you turn your cheek. It's not meant to say walk away, but it's meant to say be merciful. Again, we have this these the same idea that goes over and over in our gospel text. If if someone asks for your cloak, you should give them your tunic too. Give to those who beg. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Number three, big one, right? Right here in this text. Right in a row. If you were an atheist or a pagan, this would be the only text you needed. Judge not. Do unto others. Turn your cheek. What that equals to the unbeliever is I can do whatever I want, you can't. But for the believer, it's not that same, it's not the same thing. For us it means be merciful, for even your Father in heaven is merciful. When someone hits you, what do you desire to do? In your heart of hearts. Not only hit them back, but hit them harder back. If you if you gave your coat to someone, they took your shirt too. What would you do? That doesn't make a good enough break for all of them. Or if it came to and I, and I would love to see this sometime. I, I, I every once in a while I, I watch that judge up in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, the the his on TV, Judge Caprio. I don't know if, if y'all watch him. He's one of my favorites because he's, he's he's very lenient and loving and caring and he's pretty funny personally. Uh, I, but I would love for someone to come up there and say, "Okay, you've been caught with seven traffic violations, and then the, and then uh, how do you plead?" And, and you plead, "Judge not," or a murderer coming up before the judge and saying, "How do you plead?" I plead, judge not. (coughs) It doesn't work quite that way. Because the judgment in which we shall be judged, the good which we do, which is done through Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit, all of that, in good measure, has been pressed down, shaken together, and run over. And that is the cross. That is is Jesus Christ. Of all the good that you can do, of all the good you'll ever be able to do, it is all done by Christ and Him crucified, buried, and raised. Outside of that, there is no other. Judge not. Christ did not say those words. In fact, He said no words outside of you have said. Judge not. If we had a Lord who did not judge, we would be damned. 
But as, as we have it, Christ has judged us. And when we die, and I cannot express this enough, you've heard me say it over and over, when we die, we will stand before God the Father. And God the Father will look at us through the eyes of His crucified Son. And we will be judged. But whoever said that judgment was always bad? What happens when the judgment for you is innocent? It's true, we should leave the judging up to God. Discern for yourselves. Don't be stupid. That's not what this text is saying. But know that there is one who will judge you eventually. And as Lutherans, we can't wait. We don't fear the nonsense in the rapture. We don't fear that because it doesn't exist, number one. And number two, because we have a well-beloved Son who gave up His life for us, who has washed us clean, who feeds us from His very own table. And so, when we, so we are not to say, judge not, Lord, judge not. But rather we are saying, we should say, judge me, Christ. Judge me. And Lord, by Your mercy, find me innocent. And He says, my Son, I do. And at that point, what more is there to say? Judge not, lest you be judged. Turn the other cheek. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But remember this for all the good that you do, and all the good that's commanded here. All of it can only be done through Christ the crucified and the Holy Spirit that is within us. Be discerning. Be loving. Be quick to forgive. For you will be forgiven so much quicker. Not because of what you have done, but because of what has been done. And so now we partake in that true forgiveness. For those of you in today who have been slapped and say, well, I'm not turning the other cheek, I know this. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. Before you come up and take the supper, know this. If you have not forgiven someone, you take this communion to your condemnation. Before you come, make sure that the other cheek has been turned. Make sure that you have forgiven all who have harmed you. If there is someone that you are arguing with or fighting with, and those of you who are uh, who, who may have uh, hateful feelings towards one another not in the church, outside of the church, anywhere, know this, you must forgive them or do not come to the supper. For in the same amount of judgment that you have given or not given, so you will receive. So let us come and be judged. Let that judgment be this. My body given for you. My blood shed for you. And in those words, we will then hear these words. May the, true, may the eating and drinking of our Lord's body and blood strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Depart in His peace. Amen.